Welcome! This is the 22nd in my series of climate mythbusters, and the myth I'm going to bust today is that volcanoes emit more carbon dioxide than humans do. Let's go to the myth conception itself first. One of the advocates of this position is a guy called Ian Pilmer. He said, over the past 250 years, humans have added just one part of carbon dioxide in 10,000 to the atmosphere. One volcanic cough can do this in a day. This is echoed by many other people, including places like the no-trick zone. Under present conditions, the natural emissions, vol meaning volcanoes, contributes 373 parts per million and anthropogenic emissions 17 parts per million. Now, both these statements are at the very least misleading and generally completely wrong. Well, just how are we going to sort all of this out? Well, one way of doing it would be to look at the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and see if there's any major reaction to it following a major eruption of a volcano. So we'll start with the so-called Keeling curve, which is a measure of the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere measured from Hawaii. And you can see here the general increase in carbon dioxide over the last 60 years. And the sawtooth pattern is an indication of the annual variation in carbon dioxide, effectively the earth breathing. So now let's add to this plot the dates of the major eruptions over the last 60 years. The first of these was in 1963 with Mount Agung. That was a VEI of five. VEI is a measure of the intensity of the volcanic eruption. And five is a very major eruption. Then we had Mount St. Helens in 1980, which was just about a five. Then we had Hel Cajon in 1982, which was a five as well. Then the big one, Mount Pinatubo in 1991. A little later that year, we had another massive eruption at Mount Hudson, but a five plus. And then in 2011, we had Cordon Caule, which was also a five. So we've had six major eruptions in the last 60 years. Let's take a look at this curve and can you see any major change in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere during or immediately following those eruptions? I think the answer there is no. Well, that sets a limit of the concentration of carbon dioxide that can be added to the atmosphere by a volcanic eruption, which means it's much less than the annual variation in carbon dioxide, which is very small. Well, perhaps the annual variations are masking the effect. So I downloaded the Keeling data and replotted it. So this should look exactly the same as the previous curve, which it does. And so then I took that same data and ran a 12 month smooth algorithm across the data. and I get this. Now you can see there are little bumps and wiggles in there. So let's see if any of those correspond to the dates of these volcanic eruptions. So I'm going to put the volcanic eruptions in here in blue. And you can see that the first one, not really very convincing, nor the second, nor the third. The peak there actually occurs before the volcanic eruption, which doesn't really make a lot of sense and no effect there. So for all six of our major eruptions, there seems to be no significant increase in the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere. In fact, there are much larger bumps and dips at other times not associated with major volcanic eruptions. So that basically says they have a very, very small effect indeed. So let's see if we can actually quantify the contribution of volcanic activity to the carbon dioxide content of the Earth's atmosphere. To do that, we have to go to a finer scale. And what I've done here is measure the month-to-month -month change in carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere. And as you can see, it's been steadily increasing and we can attribute that increase to human activity from isotopic studies of the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. So now let's put on the six major eruptions that we've had over the last 60 years. I've marked them here in red this time. Now, if you look at uh, the times of these, you can see no particular trend in the data as far as increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, either during or immediately following those eruptions. Now I'll point you to the scale here on the left. That arrow indicates 0.1 parts per million, so one part in 10 million. So on that scale, we are not registering any significant input from these volcanoes to the carbon content of the Earth's atmosphere. So that would say at best the contribution by volcanoes to the carbon dioxide content of the Earth's atmosphere is less than 1% of that of human inputs to the Earth's atmosphere. The counter argument here is that volcanism is increasing and they show plots like this. Now I'm very skeptical of this plot, especially the earlier data before the 19th century when there were very few observers and very few instruments to observe what's going on and secondly, how can you possibly estimate a VEI when you don't have those sorts of measurements? Also, most of the increase has been in VEI 0, 1 and 2 level events, the very small events. By comparison, a VEI 5 event 
is 10,000 times stronger than a VEI1 event. And VI6 is 100,000 times stronger. Now we've had five such events in the last 60 years, two sixes and four fives. So that would be equivalent to 240,000 VEI1 events. Divide that by 60 years, that's equivalent to 4,000 VEI1 events per year. And note the scale on the right here, that the increase they're talking about is to 50 uh, events per year. So these major events are gonna dwarf the input from these many smaller events. Also, I think this is probably much more of an instrumental effect than anything else. From the mid 19th century, we've had much more sensitive instruments to detect remote uh, volcanic activity. And from the mid 60s, we've had global satellite coverage, uh, which detects events in remote areas where there are no humans to see what's going on. So I think this is probably just an increase in detectability rather than a real increase in volcanic activity. So let's draw some conclusions here. We have shown there is no correlation between large eruptions and an increase in carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. The US Geological Survey and many other geological organizations around the world indicate that human annual emissions of carbon dioxide dwarf that from volcanism by over a factor of 100, and we showed that just a little while back. The main effect from volcanic eruptions is to cool the Earth, not to warm it, due to the aerosols, mainly sulfur dioxide, injected into the stratosphere, which reflect away sunlight. So if you hear somebody claiming that volcanoes explain the increase in carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere and hence global warming, please tell them they're full of nonsense and uh, post a link to this video. So until next time, goodbye.